Is there a um a Marvel character where he's just angry and sarcastic? Angry, sarcastic man. I've decided to go on a little trip to scatter my dad's ashes. Oh, that's sweet. My ashes? You're not my dad, remember? Am I adopted? Ricky, congratulations on season three of Afterlife. I can't believe that this is it. Yeah, no, it's it's bittersweet, but um, you've got to end it some sometime. And uh, I mean, I, I could go on, and uh, it makes sense to go on. Really, you've set up all the characters. It's gone down a treat. Um, but uh, I, I think um, I think it's right artistically to end it. It definitely feels like the perfect place to end. And the show's obviously been so, so successful. It's helped so many people through such difficult times. I'm interested to know, how did it feel walking on set for the first time filming season one compared to the final day wrapping season three? Well, when I first came up with the idea, I was worried. I thought, could, can people, could people take this? Can they, can they laugh um, when they've just seen this guy has lost the love of his life? And, you know, he's suicidal. And and they can because real life's like that, you know. Real life is like ups and downs. Every day you're having a, a, a laugh and then you get a terrible text, you know. And, and people like to see themselves reflected and they like to see real stuff uh, on, on TV. And um, I think that's why it's a taboo, you know. Uh, things like grief, mental health, death, they're, they're still taboos because it be, we don't explore them and... Um, I think that's what comedy's for, really. It's getting us over bad stuff. So I felt a responsibility to treat it with respect. And he, he didn't just snap out of it, you know, at the end of season one. And uh, it it was never meant to be an explanation to grief. But, you know, saying goodbye on the third season is, um, again, it's bittersweet because it's lovely that we've achieved it. Particularly we were filming it in, in lockdown, so we got through it. Well, I did nearly cry when I said goodbye to the dog. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, oh, she doesn't know why she, she's not going to see me on Monday. So probably overestimated how much she cares about me. But um, yeah, uh, it, it's just, you know, you dedicate three years of your life to something. So, um, you know, you, it's nice to it's nice to start and it's nice to finish as well. Saying goodbye to a character like Tony, as you say, must be hard. What's something he's taught you that's really stayed with you? Tony's, I, I suppose, made me think more and more that uh, it asks the big question, if you lose everything, is life still worth living? And without spoilers, I think the answer is yes. 100%. How different did it feel letting go of Tony compared to, say, letting go of a previous character like David Brent or other characters that you've played? I, I suppose it's the same thing. You think, oh, you've put so much work into that and you've got it to a place and people love it and you're just going to end it. But... You don't end it. What you do is, um, you, you know, you, you sort of, it's still there. You, you, you know, the, when, when people watch The Office or, or Derek or Afterlife in 10 years' time, they won't be thinking, oh, this isn't around anymore. They'll be going through those same emotions like it's real because it wasn't real at the time. That's the, I think that's the beauty of it. It's, it's there forever, whatever happens. It will outlive me. And that's a, a lovely thing. That's the great thing about all art, really. It, it outlives the artist. And it's, it, it's not mine anymore. It's, it's everyone else's. It's, it's theirs. And they can watch it or not watch it. Um, and, and, and I do like that. Because if you outstay your welcome and you do, you do third, fourth, sixth, seventh, you know, the... the, the arguably the the quality goes down, but even if the quality doesn't go down, people can never get back that feeling of when it was of when it was new, mm. you know. We've got to talk about the star of the show, Brandy. Yeah. I know you're a big cat person. Pickle is adorable. Aww. But have you been tempted into getting a dog now? Always. We've just rescued a, a cat, um, so I don't think she'd appreciate me bringing home a dog straight away. Um, and we, you know, I travel too much usually, and uh, you know, a, a, you leave a cat with a house sitter, and it goes, yeah, whatever, just feed me, whatever. Whereas I can't stand the look on that dog's face if you keep if you keep going away every week, and you know, they only live fifteen years. I want to spend every minute of you know <laughs> its life, and uh, also. Um, I go walking, me and Jane go walking every day, wherever we are, New York or London, just to meet dogs. I know about 200 dogs by name and I scruffle them and uh, I think all dogs are mine. I think we you, you can't own a dog, everyone shares a dog. 
The, a dog to me is the, the the greatest thing on earth. They're 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 magical. You know, I'm not a spiritual person, but when it comes to dog, I think that there's something pretty magical about them. If I see a dog, I speed up like a toddler. I walk towards it. <laughs> I prefer dogs to humans, oh, and yeah. I'm not joking when yeah. I say that. Oh, the humans come second, no doubt about it. <laughs> this show is so special, as I say, because one minute you can be in fits of laughter, the next you can be crying. It's got so much heart. What's the most common thing you get people coming up to you in the street saying? Most people say, say I love afterlife. Some some keep walking, and uh, uh, and some say, um, I, I I lost my sister or my brother or my husband or my wife. Um, before I watched it and uh, it's just lovely to you know it takes a lot of courage to come up to someone and say that and um, I suppose th this has given an excuse to say that and you know usually you know usually keep those things to yourself because some people are even embarrassed to, to bring it up or um, and some people are still sad but it, it's just lovely that it, it helped them in a in a, in a small way and um, they say oh, I was I was just like Tony so I think they think oh I thought there was something wrong with me but there's not that's that you know, that, and then they talk to each other, and even therapists have come up to me and said, "Oh, we I use that in my some of my sessions." And one therapist said, um, uh, "People absolutely love it. Um, uh, please don't let Tony kill himself." So I took that on because, uh, and I, and I made the third series all about hope, and I think that's uh, that's that's the thing that people should take away from this series: that there's always hope. Um, that uh, uh, and and the fact that it was a love story. It was a love story from beginning to end, really. It really is. Yeah. But do you feel like your relationship with your fans has changed because of Afterlife? Because uh, uh, of how much it's touched people? Yes, I do. Um, I, I've realised that everyone's grieving, everyone's got problems. Um, uh, I, I think that about my live audience as well. I, I appreciate them um, more than I, I always did, but I think about it now and I realise what a privilege it is that I get paid to do what I love. And people spend their hard-earned cash and they have to find a babysitter or a car park, and, you know, and then they come. I better have something interesting to say. I better make them laugh for an hour or so. Um, and, uh, and it all comes from the fans. It all, you know, you realise that. If, 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 if people like you, you're bulletproof. You know, the, or, or, you know, all the studios, the awards, bodies, the, 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 if people like you, they want you too. So it all comes from the fans, and you can become bulletproof. And now, you know, you can do it yourself. I, I don't. I, I go direct to fans. I do Twitter live, or I, you know, I thank them. I thank them personally, you know, um, because uh, yeah, it, 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 it's all about them. That it's, they'd be pointless. I, I wouldn't do this if there, no one watched it. Why would I? Um, so, uh, uh, and the emotional connection means the most to me. You know, a, a fact that it, the fact that it's touched them or made them think or cry or whatever, um, that uh, that's that's better than any award. You can see how much you really do appreciate them. Um, I love. I think it's in the first episode of season three how Tony says that he could kill Spider Man. Do you think that Tony could lift <laughs> Thor's hammer? How well would he cope in the MCU? <laughs> uh, well. I'm afraid Tony's got the same back as me, so he'd have to be careful lifting anything. I'd love to see him in the MCU. I think he could. I think he'd do pretty well. Is there is there a um, uh, a Marvel character where he's just angry and sarcastic, angry sarcastic man? That would, uh, that would be good. There's room for Tony. I'm calling it. <laughs> I want to produce the credit as well. <laughs> I'm up for it as long as there's a lot of sitting down. I'll do any action movie as long as there's a lot of sitting down. That could be his superpower. <laughs> just sat down. <laughs> he just sits down, He could yeah. just spin on a chair and just fire things. I'm in. I'm in. It's going to happen. <laughs> um, and really quickly, because I know you've got to go, uh, one of my favourite memes is with you and the ginger kid. I'm not going to repeat it because it's too rude for allowed. this. You're not, not allowed. allowed. Radio. Did you know that that moment would become so big? No. Um, it was the first joke I wrote for the show, though, to show... Um, how angry Tony was, and he had—he didn't care. He had no inhibitions, and uh, he didn't care about the consequences. Um, and uh, it, it also had to be funny. It had to be nasty, but you had to um, feel for Tony. So it, it came straight after you'd just seen the the video message from his wife. So you knew he was wounded and angry and sad, and he'd lost everything. 
So it, it, it allowed it, you you allowed him his moment, and uh, uh, and people asked me was the kid there when I said the and he wasn't. No, it went to a close up of me, and then and then we put him out. So uh, 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 and he was great. He was just fantastic. Um, so it is one of my that is one of my proudest moments. That line. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. You must have friends and family sending you memes and gifts from the show. Well, on Twitter, I, I, I just get I I see loads. Yeah, I don't know how. There was one. There was one about ten minutes after we put out the trailer. I don't know how they do it. There's geniuses on the. <laughs> They're I, quick. I, yeah. They're quick. These people. I know. I I wouldn't know how to do it. I don't know how. I don't know. You know. I only learned how to pronounce it recently. Uh, so no, I, uh, I I'm no good at that. I can I can work things. My my um, my, a few years ago, my uh, my girlfriend went to visit her mum, um, and uh, I was in the house alone. Uh, for two days. The boiler broke down. I didn't know where it was. I couldn't work the telly. So she came home after two days to see me <laughs> on the couch under a blanket with a cat listening to the radio. So I can't make gifts now. Is it gifts or gifs? I'm still not sure. I'm still I not call confident. it a gif. Oh, okay. Phew. I got away with it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ricky. And huge congrats on season three. It's brilliant. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. It's Radio.